Good morning. How many of you have experienced studying in English in a non-English speaking country? I experienced the same situation in Japan. I came to Japan in December 2010 to study my master's degree uh, in Graduate School of Language and Culture in the field of linguistics. And I found out that I have to take the entrance exam in Japanese. Although my supervisor told me I can study in English, I can write my dissertation in English, but I had to take the entrance exam and also the interview in Japanese. Uh, so I had no choice. I really wanted to study linguistics. So my supervisor told me that it's better to take the Japanese intensive course. So I took <laughs> Japanese intensive course for a year. And after that elective course, I, start, uh, I studied about 700 uh, Chinese characters or more. Uh, the time I went to Japan, I just knew konnichiwa, means hello in Japanese. Uh, and uh, it was very hard for me to study Japanese in order to prepare myself to take the written exam in Japanese. And uh, finally, at the end, I found out that it's very uh, challenging for me to take the written exam in Japanese and I searched for other possible options. And I found my current supervisor in the Graduate School of Human Sciences, but I had to change my field of study from linguistics to education. Uh, and I thought, why shouldn't I study uh, about this problem that happened to me, about the challenges that Iranian students might be facing uh, who want to study uh, in, Jap in English in Japan, uh, and who may have little Japanese language proficiency. Uh, this is uh, my today's presentation is part of my master's dissertation. Um, I just finished my uh, master's in 2016, and since April 2016, I started my PhD. Now I'm looking at broader uh, range of international students from diverse background. Today I'm going to talk about Iranian students. Let's start with a brief background to the study. Internationalization initiatives in Japanese universities are mostly to increase the number of international students. Uh, the latest plan was set in 2008 to recruit uh, 300,000 international students by 2020. Currently, the latest data I have uh, from uh, Japanese government more, uh, mixed uh, website, uh, there are 208,000 international students studying Japanese universities. Uh, but in the literature, it was pointed out that there is less focus on preparation for the increased diversity, training academic faculty, and also there is a shortage of experts in international education field. Although recently there are more English medium instruction or EMI courses and or English full English thoughts programs or ETPs at Japanese universities, um, still there are uh, many challenges happening. Uh, such as uh, finding English-speaking faculty, the quality of education, and a need for more EMI courses, especially at graduate level. Uh, we have more uh, ETPs or EMI courses available at undergraduate level. Um, the international students who come to Japan are mostly from China or from Asian countries. And uh, these international students usually come to Japan with high uh, Japanese level proficiency, and they mostly come to study in Japanese language. But uh, many other international students from diverse background, including Iranians, are also uh, being uh, uh, attracted to Japanese universities. And uh, in the literature, uh, it was pointed out that it's necessary to provide support for each group of international students with different backgrounds and to plan for program improvements. So uh, in the context of an increase in English medium degree programs being delivered in Japan, and where the students taking these courses are often L2 speakers are of both Japanese language and English language, this study provides a case study of Iranian students. The objectives are to assess the extent to which Iranian students have sufficient English language proficiency, uh, English and Japanese language proficiency, to identify whether there is sufficient support in English for uh, their studies and life in Japan, to explore Iranian international students' opinion about studying in the English medium, and finally, from the point of view of the Iranian students uh, participant in this study, uh, identify any possible language support strategies. Um, there is a shortage of literature related to minority groups of international students studying in Japanese universities. 
And also, uh, there is little work on language challenges for students studying in English, especially at graduate level. This study looks at two different questions. Firstly, are Iranian students studying in English in Japanese universities receiving sufficient language support? And secondly, does a specific group of international students, such as Iranians, need a particular or any specific kind of support? Here is the conceptual framework I used for my uh, study. It's based on two different studies. Firstly, Annette Bradford's 2013 study. She looked at uh, special challenges in implementing EMI or ETPs in Japanese universities. And this study also is derived from Suneyoshi's 2005 study. She divided these kinds of challenges into three groups, linguistic, cultural, and structural. And also I looked at Japanese university support system or support model from Ishikawa's 2011 research. She divided these uh, models to paternalism model, means guiding the students like parents, and global competitiveness model means uh, providing sufficient information for autonomous students. Um, linguistic challenges are mostly related to the kind of challenges uh, related to lack of uh, language proficiency of students or support of staff or like professors. Uh, cultural challenges, the cultural diversity uh, that the students are facing from their own background and also the home country and the structural challenges are mostly related to the administration. Uh, and management of these uh, English taught programs. Um, two uh, different studies have been conducted. Uh, firstly, I did uh, I conducted an exploratory study uh, to see uh, what kind of challenges are really occurring um, and to get an idea. Uh, so I interviewed all current students at a leading uh, Japanese national university. Uh, and they were nine current students at that time. I could interview all of them. And also I interviewed nine more students. Uh, they were just recently graduated at that time. Um, then um, I used the thematic analysis. I found some themes and some problems, areas of satisfaction and areas of dissatisfaction based on the points of view of the students. Uh, then, uh, in order to have a broader access to all Iranian students studying in different Japanese universities, I conducted uh, another study. Uh, this time, uh, I used an online survey, uh, and uh, it was both quantitative and qualitative because I used open-ended questions as well. And uh, 73 Iranian participants, uh, which were, I don't know why is it going <laughs> to the next slide, sorry. Uh, um, so, uh, what was the saying? Uh, yes, so 73 Iranian participants participated in the studies. Um, the majority of them uh, were current students. Uh, some of them were just uh, graduated from the, their Japanese universities. And I looked at the students' age, gender, marital status, living with or without family, their faculty, field of study, and their English and Japanese language, their perception of their own English and Japanese language ability. Uh, this table uh, shows the uh, Iranian students' number and also Iranians residing uh, in Japan. Um, we can see that it's about 200. Um, it has changed a little bit in 2011. Um, also, uh, there was a drop, drop off, like uh, the, the decline in the number of international students because of the uh, earthquake uh, and Fukushima nuclear crisis. Uh, so after some years, still we can uh, see that the number of uh, Iranian students, also international students, has started to increase again. Uh, so the latest data shows there are 217 Iranian students studying in different Japanese universities. And they mostly come um, to Japan with Monbusho or Mex scholarship, Japanese government scholarship. This data uh, shows the majority uh, this data based, based on the majority of the students. Uh, we can see some similarities and differences between study one and study two. Uh, in the study one, uh, they could use more English uh, and uh, basically the level of satisfaction was higher uh, because it was a leading uh, Japanese national university, a top university. Um, in the study two, 
the students were from different Japanese universities, private and public. Uh, although they were still uh, mostly from well-known Japanese universities, but uh, the level of satisfaction was a bit uh, lower, and also they had to use more Japanese language. Uh, so uh, the majority were male, married. Uh, they were living with their families. Some of them had chil a child or children with them. Um, their, their age was about 26 to 30. Uh, they were mostly masters uh, or PhD students. Uh, even PhDs were more than masters. Uh, and they were studying engineering or engineering sciences. Um, many of them, they said they just use English. Uh, and they thought that their English is sufficient enough. Um, and many said they, have, uh, they use Japanese language. Uh, they don't use Japanese language that much. And, uh, they think that their Japanese language is not sufficient enough, and uh, the majority start, have started learning Japanese after coming to Japan. Uh, so here are the areas of satisfaction. I found out uh, there are mainly two basic areas of satisfaction from the point of view of these participants. The English language support they receive from their supervisors, and uh, the English language support they receive from their uh, student tutors. Uh, student tutors are students who are paid from the university to support the students. And usually the students can receive uh, tutors for uh, one semester or two semesters based on their needs. Um, although even in those two uh, areas of satisfaction, there were a few cases that reported a lot of difficulties. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's going on. I don't know how to stop it. Uh, uh, even in those uh, areas of satisfaction, there were some uh, students that reported a lot of difficulties, especially in the communication. They said in the uh, emails and written communication, they had less problem, but in the communication with their supervisors and tutors, many said they had to speak in Japanese, and they had a lot of problems with that. The areas of satisfaction, dissatisfaction were mainly three groups, uh, communication with peers, meetings, seminars, and administrative infrastructure. The third one was the most common. Almost all of the participants reported this one um, as, the area of the, uh, as the main area of dissatisfaction, um, mainly because this is, uh, this, they reported it's very monolingual, and uh, they uh, have to uh, always uh, use Google Translate or ask someone to help them to read the emails and uh, the information, the information uh, from the Jap their Japanese university and also the communication with their peers and the meeting and seminars. Um, so these Iranian students received some good English language support, uh, but they reported that this is often not adequate as many have low level Japanese skills. And this call for more effective English language strategies. Uh, for many of them, as I said, the English language support from their supervisors and tutors were not problematic. However, forms and announcements, seminars, and lab-based meetings uh, were problematic. Although many of them indicated that they usually uh, could receive help with the translation from someone in the office uh, or from their Japanese university, they always have to ask for help. And uh, they're in the situation that they're dependent on someone else. And uh, this is... Uh, related to uh, Ishikawa's uh, uh, paternalism model, uh, which shows that uh, they're trying to really help the students, but still uh, it's like uh, the forms are not available and they have to go and ask uh, for the forms and the information. Uh, so Iranian students' experience have to rely more on English language support in their studies because their Japanese is relatively weak. And there is more English language support, uh, need, there is a need for more English language support for them compared to those international students with better Japanese language ability. And uh, they usually come to Japan with families, uh, so they uh, have additional demands on their Japanese compared to other EMI students who are living alone. And many are uh, studying in the engineering uh, or engineering sciences. So they have to stay in the lab and they have to study hard. Uh, so they have limited opportunities to improve their Japanese. Although many of them reported that they really want to study Japanese, but they usually, because uh, their PhD time is usually three years, and uh, the, many of them reported like they don't uh, 
plan to stay in Japan, so it's a short time and they just want to study in English and finish their degree in three years. So they don't usually have enough time to study Japanese and uh, especially the written Japanese needs a long time. Uh, and um, in terms of the uh, Bradford's uh, typology of challenges, uh, mainly uh, the main areas of dissatisfaction were uh, the uh, structural challenges related to administration and management. Um, finally, uh, I would like to end this with uh, the suggestions that uh, the participants uh, uh, provided from their point of view. Uh, creating forms, making announcements and emails in both Japanese and English, or cover essential information. Organizing uh, ZEMIs means uh, seminars in Japanese and lab-based meeting, or at least Q&A parts in English, so that international students um, can uh, actively interact in discussion and uh, know about each other's as research. Organizing more in my classes and organizing classes for Japanese students that develop intercultural competencies so that interactions are easier. And here are the references I used. Thank you so much for listening.